this is going to wind up being more of like a just rant. It is Tuesday Newsday, but it's going to be a rant Tuesday Newsday. So we all know, well, I'm sure you all know by now that you can't like cross your legs like, like this anymore and call it sitting Indian style. For some stupid, unknown, unnecessary reason, I think it's absolutely ridiculous, we now call it crisscross applesauce, which makes perfect sense. You're crisscrossing your legs. But where does the applesauce come in? Because it rhymes with crisscross? Doesn't make any sense to me. It's ridiculous. Sorry, I almost said something that could have been offensive. Speaking of offensive, in Alabama, uh, two years ago, roughly, the Alabama State Department of Education just, uh, well, technically two years ago, they came up with these rules, and just recently, these rules were brought back into fruition. They are saying that uh, they have an inappropriate activities, games, and practices list. What they deem as inappropriate for most kids and should be deemed inappropriate to play at school. So here's just, kind of, I'm, I'm just going to kind of read these off and You'll probably notice my blood boil as, as I go down the list because it is ridiculous. Yoga. Yoga is prohibited before, during, and after school. Um, and also on public campus. Dodgeball or any variation of the name. They say there's no standards uh, in the Alabama course of study, physical education for any grade that supports, justifies this activity variation or any other name, where a student or students are targets to have things thrown at them. Here's a brutal one, Duck Duck Goose. Um, it is a game of minimal participation. The chosen goose attempts to get up from a sitting position to try and catch the ducker who only has to go about 60 feet and already has a full running head start. Everyone else just sits and screams at ear-shattering pitch and decibel levels. A game called Giants, Elves, and Wizards, uh, a.k.a. Crows and Cranes. Never played this one, but I'm sure if I did, I would have grown up being completely dysfunctional with a twitch. Like all the kids today who most likely know this game, it is an updated version of the already bad Crows and Cranes. Participation time is a, a bare minimum. The rules take forever to explain, and even then, students are still confused. The game usually ends when two students crash heads together. Kickball. A, st a game students can organize and play quite well all by themselves as early as second grade. Uh, combine that with minimal activity for 90% of the students... Then the potential for embarrassment when a kicker misses the rolling ball and the opportunity to get players out by hitting them as hard as possible with a thrown ball. Musical chairs. Yeah. A classic elimination game in which the least skilled and least attentive students are immediately eliminated and then sent to improve their abilities by sitting on the floor, spinning mindlessly in circles and waiting 15 minutes for the winner, almost always the same student, to be determined. Relay races. A uh, classic elimination, uh, sorry, an eight-minute activity in which a student gets one 20-second chance to go and either succeed or fail in front of classmates eagerly watching uh, and successes are generally ignored, but failures are fodder for continuing ridicule, at least through the dismissal at the end of the day. Steal the Bacon a uh, sideline game in which two opposing players come out to the center of the court and compete against each other in front of the entire class. An activity with this potential for embarrassment and absolutely minimal activity time 
easily qualifies as terrible. The specific student games or activities they have to avoid. Uh, crack the whip, dodgeball, doggy doggy, where's your bone? Never heard of that one. Duck duck goose, four corners, heads up, seven up. Line soccer, kickball, messy backyard, musical chairs, pinball, red light, green light, red rover, relay races, Simon says, spud, steal the bacon, and tag. Now, I grew up with about 90% of these games. In fact, to this day, even any chance I get, I say, let's play heads up, seven up. If I'm ever in a place that's like, hey, we're bored, what do we do? Let's play heads up, seven up. I never got the feeling like that was one of those games that is uh shaming someone or damaging anyone or anything this is ridiculous but they want to make sure that these inappropriate games do not put a student on display they said it can be fine for the most talented or confident but devastating to the fragile self-image of low and middle level performers um also teaches um Inappropriate teaching practices. Uh, physical education teachers should avoid anything that involves only a portion of the students participating in an activity while others stand around and wait. Um, exercise is a form of punishment or withholding physical activities is uh, as a punishment. Uh, don't let student captains pick the teams. No shirts versus skins. That's no big deal. And um, there's a long list of other things to avoid. Um, but they say that it, it, it just doesn't promote self-worth. Yes, I felt like an absolute loser when I got picked list last in gym class, couldn't climb the rope and everything else because, well, I wasn't physically fit. That's my own darn problem. When I miss the ball in kickball, it's because I suck or I sucked at that one time and sure i probably deserve the what's wrong with you phrase by all of my teammates because i missed the ball but guess what when they missed the ball i did the hey what's wrong with you right back at them and what happened i developed thick skin they developed thick skin because we we're both giving each other grief and it's just a part of life nowadays these poor poor children will never know what it's like to be picked last in gym class because there won't be a gym class because, well, heaven forbid people learn to just come in second place. It's okay. It's okay to be picked last. It's okay to suck at heads up seven up. It's okay to, to not be good at things, but to go and just like cradle these poor little turds because they can't afford to experience life, they're going to suck throughout life and they're never going to learn. It's unbelievable. Why can't we just go back to saying you sit Indian style, you play tag or kickball or dodgeball, you get pegged in the face by the ball, you learn to duck, okay? You, you just learn. Why do we have to go and ban all the things in life that we grew up with and and say all of a sudden it's bad? I'm sure our parents' parents' parents played uh, a form of Foursquare or Tag. It's been around for, I'm sure, a hundred years. And look how our parents... Okay, maybe that's a bad example. Look at, I'm sure, how our great-great-grandparents... Look how you turned out. I'm sure if you played Foursquare, you turned out normal. If you didn't leave a comment below and say, I'm dysfunctional because I played Foursquare and I got picked last in gym class and I'm one pathetic loser. No offense. <sighs> I really wish this was a fake news Friday. It's kind of unbelievable that this is real news. The people are throwing fits over stuff like this. It's true. I can't believe it. So, 
I should probably get off my soapbox, get off with my rant, and let you get back to your day. But leave a comment below and let me know how dysfunctional your life is, knowing that uh, you were punished by these horrible, horrific games as a child. Hopefully, hopefully you will recover at some point and your children will never be put through this abuse. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give me a thumb up. It won't offend me if you do. It might offend me if you don't, though. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, too. We'll see you later. Bye.